Welcome back to the Bowling Sisters and I am back again and today for our UEFA Champions League Wednesday night games uh, which have happened let's have a quick review and how have all the teams from group uh, E to H have performed so uh, let's get straight into it the first game which I really wanted to talk about is uh, Salzburg RB Salzburg versus Zagreb in group number E uh, and uh, the game was uh, pretty even Stevens for uh, for the better, better part where uh, Zagreb was holding on and, and, and it was going into a draw but then in the 71st minute uh, Zagreb gave away a penalty and uh, Salzburg obliged and scored but if we look at the stats which are there uh, it always shows that um, possession wise Zagreb was uh, on top but in terms of the shots on target, uh, whatever possession with, uh, with Salzburg got, they were always there. So they had 18 shots in comparison to 10 from Zagreb, whereas 6 were on target and Zagreb just had 3. What this shows for to us is that Zagreb was uh, under immense pressure, well as while attacking, Salzburg were more organized at the back and as well as in the midfield because the majority of the battle which was happening was the battle of the midfields where Zagreb was not able to uh, overcome Salzburg in the battle of the groups. What this does is that in this group, it opens uh, up the group quite a lot. After the first game shocking victory over Chelsea, Zagreb has now fallen on to the last position whereas in game week number 2 by the end of the match week number 2 they were top of the table. Other than that Salzburg after their victory after 2 draws and a victory Salzburg is now at the top of the helm with 5 points whereas Zagreb is at the bottom of the group with 3 points. The second game which I want to talk about are the other two competitors in this group which are two big giants the AC Milans and the Chelsea's of this group where this game or this group was more or less determined on the basis that these two teams should be uh, able to qualify but right now as it stands after match day 3 Chelsea are still in contention of going through whereas AC Milan is falling down to the Europa League spot after yesterday's game where Chelsea humbled AC Milan it was a very high expectation game um, a couple of comebacks and a home game or homecomings for a couple of people especially Tamori and Oliver Giroud uh, coming back to Chelsea but Chelsea were ruthless they didn't take things uh, on an emotional front especially from both the players who were coming back Grant Potter and his team were uh, steamrolling as to say it very honestly they steamrolled AC Milan starting off in the 24th minute the new signing Fofana scored his first Chelsea goal and his uh, debut goal at the bridge. Then in the second half, the second new signing of the summer has been um, uh, and the second goal in I think so in three games uh, for him Aubameyang scored second goal in two games back to back for Aubameyang. He scored in the 56th minute and then to top it all off, I the man of the match for uh, that game, Reese James gave a brilliant performance in five minutes Chelsea belted out two games and it was the last nail in the coffin for AC Milan where they were not able to come back overall it was Chelsea's game possession wise shots on target as well as uh, shots total shots taken AC Milan was blown out of water and also to into account taking into account that AC Milan didn't have a lot of good players on their bench as well as they were not playing maybe because of injuries or covid so whatever the health issues which they had but that doesn't rule out the fact that now when chelsea travels to san siro they will be high in conference and post that victory if they do win it should be a smooth sailing into the next round if no blotches or they don't screw up the job in san siro coming next week against AC Milan. Moving from Group E of uh, Chelsea uh, versus AC Milan, Zagreb as well as Salzburg, let's move to Group F where the current holders, uh, Real Madrid were playing uh, Shakhtar Donetsk. It should have been an easy game which was made apparently by uh, Real Madrid. Uh, started off with Rodrigo in 13 minute where he opened the scoring and then in the 28th minute Vinicius Jr. 
Zagreb get a go got a goal back uh, in the 39th minute but after that it was just uh, the game in the midfield where uh, Real Madrid was forcing through but uh, San, uh, but uh, Shakhtar as much as they wanted to counter and score a goal they were not able to reach there because it was majority of the possession by Real Madrid 60% possession which they had they had 36 shots and 14 were on target in comparison to Shakhtar where there were only 11 shots 3 on target and 40% possession that doesn't it doesn't rule out it doesn't give out a pretty picture uh, even though these two teams are still fighting for the top honors uh, of this group but the game is now going to be decided between Leipzig and Shakhtar uh, because Real Madrid is now 3-in-3 three three. Uh, Shakhtar has got 4 points from 3 games and uh, Leipzig has got 3 points after losing the first 2 games and now winning yesterday so they are uh, there but Celtic more or less is out of this group with just 1 point on that note, let me talk about uh, uh, Schach, uh, Leipzig and uh, RB Leipzig and uh, Celtic who was the second team in Group F where Leipzig dominated the game from the word get-go. They had uh, Nkunku who more or less is uh, has I think so pre-signed a contract with Chelsea a lot of speculations also coming out uh, in the 27th minute then there was a brace from Andre Silva uh, in the 64th and the 77th minute but uh, Jota uh, in the 48th minute did make it 1-1 uh, but after that it was just Leipzig and that shows in numbers as well whereas Leipzig had 16 shots in comparison to 12 from Celtic 6 on target and 5 on target respectively and overall possession was more or less 60% for Leipzig and 40, 41%, 40-40% for uh, Celtic. This shows a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, presence and a lot of matter for Leipzig that they are slowly slowly coming back and with the sacking of their previous manager now under the new manager there is a lot of, uh, lot of uh, com camaraderie which is now coming back into Leipzig which was missing. So let's see what happens for Leipzig as well which is very very interesting and this uh, is group G where it was Manchester City uh, facing Copenhagen and it was a steamroll performance Erling Haaland scored a brace and then he was rested then rest was uh, uh, Riyad Mahrez uh, Alvarez doing the rest of the uh, uh, rest of the things for uh, Manchester City 5-0 overall Manchester City and Erling Haaland are on a steam roll 30 shots 16 on target and with an with a 76 possession 76 possession, uh, percent possession is a lot very honestly speaking is a lot on that note i think so it is a very straightforward affair in group g where manchester city is on top with nine points three out of three uh, Dortmund uh, followed by Sevilla and then Copenhagen which is there. So the next game in Group G which I have to talk about is Sevilla versus uh, Dortmund which was uh, uh, Dortmund's victory 4-1. Uh, it started off with uh, Guerrero, Billingham uh, scored uh, yesterday, he was the captain for the team. Uh, then uh, Adiyami and Brandt uh, scored the remaining goals. It was 4-1 uh, and Sevilla were just washed out. Sevilla most probably will be jumping into the Europa League if they don't get through. It was all in all a lot of possession for Sevilla. Uh, uh, what I can see is about 59% uh, possession. But then other than that, nothing else to show. They had 20 shots, uh, 6 on target. But then on the other hand, there was 19 shots and 7 on target. And the on target were more or less conversions which happened. So that is what is there for uh, in between Sevilla and Borussia Dortmund. But uh, on the other hand, uh, but on the other hand, what we have uh, is the last game uh, in the group. Uh, last, last group was between Benfica and PSG. The surprise of this is, like I mentioned when I was doing the review as well, uh, the preview as well, that the top two teams uh, are Benfica and PSG. And if PSG or Benfica get one point also. Benfica is going to be very joyous and that is what they did yesterday. They held up Neymar, Messi and Mbappe for a 1-1 draw. What 
a date has been for uh, Benfica. Messi opened the scoring and then it was uh, Daniello Pereira's own goal in the 41st minute. Rest of it, it was just uh, PSG with 65% possession and, uh, and Benfica just defending. Uh, they had a wall which was there and none of the PSG greats were able to penetrate it. Uh, with 65 and 35 possession uh, for in favor of PSG, 15 versus 8 shots in favor of PSG, 7 on target versus 6 on target respectively again in favor of PSG. It shows a lot and it shows that PSG dominated the whole game but Benfica held onto the skin of the teeth and were able to get that most important draw of this group and what this does is this puts Benfica and PSG at 7 points each followed by Juventus and then Maccabi Haifa which is more or less the dead uh, rubber team in this group. Talking about Juventus and Maccabi Haifa in the group, yesterday they were playing uh, the last game which I want to talk about is that 3-1 victory for Juventus, finally a victory where Rabiot scored a brace and then Vlankovic uh, scored the goal in the 53rd minute. It was uh, 3-1 uh, uh, and uh, Juventus uh, barely uh, had uh, the majority of the possession. That shows a lot that uh, the team is still disjoint, still is uh, not, uh, Malifo Allegri is not been able to get that team gelling and what they are looking at. So that is what I want to talk about, 16 shots versus 20 for Maccabi Haifa, 7 on target for Juventus, 4 on target for Haifa and 51-49 possession in favor of Juventus. That shows that uh, Maccabi Haifa will not be a pushover for Juventus who come when they are playing in the uh, in, in uh, Maccabi Haifa uh, stadium. So let's see what happens but then right now like I said the group uh, still 4 point deficit for Juventus, anything can happen at least in this group. We are expecting if Juventus can get through or not. So let's see what happens. So on that note, thank you for tuning in. Do like, share, subscribe, enable those notifications and I'll catch you guys in the next one.